Tarantula, the African version thereof, and it's actually known as a baboon spider, and the reason I have it on my nose is, of course, that it is dead. And we think it was dead, or deaded, killed, by a wasp. Now, what wasps do, it might not actually be dead, but just paralyzed. They'll sting them, these spider-hunting wasps, sting them on the abdomen like that, and lay their eggs inside. And while the spider is paralyzed and buried in a hole by the wasp, the wasp larvae, which is basically a sort of grub or worm, will hatch and eat the spider from within and then go out and do the same to another spider. Not very nice if you happen to be the spider. Now, something equally terrifying is the sight of a spider's fangs. Look at this under the microscope, everyone. There are the spider's fangs. Those shiny black things there are the fangs of the spider. You can see them surrounded by very nerve-sensitive hairs, and that helps the spider to know where to bite. Now, they're totally harmless to human beings, most of them. You do get various species of baboon spider, some of which aren't very harmless at all. This one is. But if you were a grasshopper or something like that that wanders past the baboon uh, spider's burrow, well, then you're going to be in some sort of trouble. Now, I'm going to move him backwards, and I'll show you the spinnerets on the end there. I'll just refocus quickly. Oops, there we are. Now, if you wondered at where a spider spins its web from, it's from there. You can see in the middle of the picture there, I'm just going to try and slightly change the focus the other way. There are those two things in the middle of your screen that are the most sharp to the light. Those are the spinnerets, and it is from there that the spider produces silk. Now, this particular spider digs a hole. It doesn't, in fact, uh, build, dig a web, but at least it will spin a web. But all spiders are able to produce silk, and it will wrap up its silk, or wrap up its prey in the silk from those spinnerets. So that's the baboon spider. Mighty magnificent creature, I think it is. Let's head back to Brent and a full frame shot of the best pelt in Africa. Now he has a little bit of leopard print with the difference. Isn't that incredible? She's so close. We can get that incredible shot of her rosettes. Definitely a bit different to some of the leopard print you see moving around in the US of A. So she's resting now. She's probably about 70 feet from where the young male is on top of that termite mound. She's still calling dramatically for the missing cub. I'm really, really hoping that cub is okay. And she is a beautiful female. About 11 years old. You can see that beautiful, beautiful face. Those long white whiskers. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Oh, and she's up and she's off. And she goes, she's calling again. There she goes right past us looking for that cub. And we're about to go into a break shortly. So be sure not to disappear so we can help you understand what's happening with this incredible leopard sighting. Wow, guys, isn't this amazing? And she seems to be slowly make, creating some distance between herself and Cindile. I'm going to stick with her. But she does keep looping back as well. I've lost sight of her now. Do you see her? Ah, there she is. Oh, where are we going to get through here? Let's just go around the termite mound. No mulberry bushes to go around out here. See if she takes this chance. To Look at her. She's taking this chance to get away from him. She's running. She's timed it perfectly. I wonder if he's going to follow. The other vehicles are still with 
with him. There's the cub, the cub's alive! The cub's alive! Incredible! Absolutely amazing! I'm so happy! <laughs> Survive, this is amazing. I'm just gonna try and move forward a tiny bit. This is the first ever sighting of Shadow's Cub on Safari Live, and we were so worried about it today that it might be expired, but there it is three month old leopard cub. I am ecstatic, I'm over the world. I can't even speak. This is just too amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna ask for words. I think I, I, I don't think I can say amazing again, but wow. Sean, Sean, just letting Sean know. Sean, the, she's just called the Mampimpan, it's alive, and she's now heading uh, west into that block uh, on the other side of the road. Are you firm? Are you firm? What's uh, the vehicle lock at the moment? Is it confirm it's two? If I'm Sean, you're more than welcome to take standby. Isn't this absolutely outstanding? I'm just at a loss of words. Keep how she looks like she keeps checking back. Look at that. She keeps looking back to make sure that that young male doesn't follow her. I'm, I'm, I just can't believe this. Isn't this amazing? I've got the most amazing news in the world. The cub has survived. It's right here. I'm gonna try and get you a visual of it. She managed to get away from her last cub and we now have a tiny three month -year old leopard cub with us. And it is unbelievable. I was really, really convinced that that cub might have got caught by the young male. There we go, I'm just gonna go forward a tiny bit. Look at this, isn't just the cutest thing you've ever seen. So she's managed to keep that young male away from her baby. Look at that. 
this is just the most amazing sighting I have had. It's just been leopards everywhere today and absolutely incredible behavior, stuff you never ever see. Wow, isn't this? Sorry guys, we're on a live African safari and we've been watching this female leopard call for her cub for the past hour and a half and I was starting to really think that that cub might have been killed by the young male who was also there. But no, this, she's managed to protect it and now she's moving away as fast as she can from that young male with her cub. Remember, hashtag Safari Live. If you want to ask us any questions about that glorious bundle of fur. Look at it go! <laughs> now this leopard cub is about three months old and the first year of a leopard cub's life is really dangerous. They have a 70% mortality rate. So, Seven out of ten leopards born will die. I'm gonna try stick with her, but she is going some very thick stuff. I'm speechless. I'm at a loss for words. I'm just so happy and so excited that that cub has survived. You can see we do get a little bit attached to the animals. We follow them on a daily basis. And it's hard not to, and I know it, you shouldn't because it is Africa and it's, and it's nature that's most raw, so things get killed quite often, but you can't just help get a little bit attached to the creatures we follow on a daily basis out here on Safari Live. Well, Janet, a big thank you to you too for joining us on the live safari. Janet says, Brent, you made my day for finding the leopard cub. Janet, I can tell you this was a very much a team effort. We are, I was out with the trackers. Uh, Johnson sat with the shadow and uh, Cindile the whole day uh, to make sure we had them for the beginning of the safari. So I can never take credit for all of this. It's just that I have such a fantastic team out here that I work with every day. I'm really lucky to live in the bush, go on live safaris, and have a great group of friends to call my work colleagues. Okay, now I'm not gonna follow her for too much longer. It's getting dark and I don't wanna disturb and I wanna make sure that this cub has the best chance of survival. It's amazing, it survived today. And hopefully it's a good omen for this cub's future. Okay, look at that. Oh, disappearing into these round leaf teak thickets. I'm gonna try stick with them for a little bit longer. I've still got her parallel to me. Oh, sorry, I might have got a bit overexcited there. I, I'm back to sort of a, a mild speed, but unfortunately, or fortunately with me, uh, it's never really mild, quite an excitable chat. But what an incredible live safari it's been. My mind is just blown how, much, how well the incredible animal characters have decided to play along. While we try get another view of her disappearing, I'm going to give you one last, one last little squiz, and then I'm going to leave her be so that cub can be safe. She's going to pop through. There she is. We'll see. They might come out into the open in front, and I'm going to let her take that little cub to safety. There it is. 
Hasn't that been incredible? I'm so ecstatic. Oh, lost for words. Now, we're going to leave something small and furry and go to something else that's small and possibly furry as well with Steph. Welcome back to the bushwalk, everybody. My name's Steph, if you've just joined us, and we've got the hairiest of all hairy caterpillars here for you. Have a look at that guy. Now, you don't want to touch them. These hairs are super irritant, and it's exactly why this worm or this caterpillar is so brightly colored. It's to warn any birds in the area that he is either or she is either very distasteful or is actually quite dangerous. Now, I know some of these hairs can be so irritant that they'd actually clog up your airways and stop you from breathing. How's that? Sorry about my arm in the way. But look at that. Isn't that the most fantastic creature you've ever seen in your life? Got a big hairy face, some whiskers. And is now creeping deeper into the bush to spend the night a little bit warmer. This time of the year, it's quite chilly at night time. And these little caterpillars need to spend most of their time in deep cover just so that they can stay alive again. Keeps them warm. They come out in the daytime, sit in the sun some of their leaves. Isn't that amazing? All right, and after that, we're going to send you up to James, who's in the tent, just waiting for you. You know, I'm normally known as the pessimistic one, but I'm so glad that my optimism today paid off, and Brent, who's normally so positive, his didn't pay off, at least today, his pessimism. Fantastic stuff that we've had, that little cub. Let's have a quick look here. We're going to take you across to the dam camera. There's the dam camera, everybody, and you can watch this every day. Watch, check this out. We're going to just go and have a look at that full moon. Zoop, zooming in, it's just uh, managed to lose focus completely. Let's go back to the water hole. There we go. There's the moon being looked at by Ronald the Rover. Now, Ronald has had a horribly lonely time here today. He's had absolutely no company at all. Uh, while we, the leopards have been knocking about on Arethusa and Juma, of course. And so, unfortunately, he's just had the old bird flying past there. That was a virtual starling that was going on there. Let's go straight back to the leopard cub. So as we tried to leave, she popped up right in front of us and we're in an incredible place where elephants have dug water. So she's brought the cub for a little drink. The elephants have dug water in a hole there and she's about to go to a cave that's got water in it as well. Look at this, isn't this just amazing? This is a live African safari. We have had the best leopard luck for the most unreliable oh, most elusive animal to find. Serengeti Debbie is on drive with us and Serengeti Debbie would like to know uh, what a mother and cub would do during the night. She might go hunt and she'll leave the cub hidden in a thicket. Look at that. Isn't this just the most special thing? Okay, so she's got to a little... Oh, the cub's going to fall. He hasn't got big enough to... Oh, here we go. Just managed to pull itself up. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> Let me just try to sneak forward for one last little view. Vim, I'm not going to drive off the cliff, am I? I hope not to. But there we go. We're going to watch her disappear into this little river system. Oh, sorry. I'll try and get, she's hiding behind the leaves, but she's going to find a nice place to hide that cub now. And we're going to leave her be here. And she's given us just the most incredible, incredible live safari today. <laughs> There's no words to describe seeing uh, a little cub like that. And to see the incredible behavior you've seen between Jamie and and Steph on the walk, and it's just been too much. Uh, speaking of Jamie, before I trip over my words, let's go see what she's up to with the hyenas. Oh, 
know exactly what it is that Brent is feeling in terms of tripping over his own words. It's just been the most incredible afternoon and so special. We could not, well the animals couldn't have planned it better on this very special Father's Day weekend. Now don't forget to send through your shout outs for tomorrow's show. Same time, same place, a live safari here on Juma, Arethusa and Cheetah Plains Game Reserves. I'm whistling, I'm whispering once again really really quietly because to end off our incredible safari experience after what we've seen with our hyenas I've brought you to see a brand new mother. Uh, my name is Jamie and this is my favorite predator. I'd like to introduce you to a female called Gwen. Our Gwen, or the viewers have nicked, the, this name comes from our incredible and loyal viewers. Our Gwen has got one tiny little cub in there, at least one, she might have two. And I'm really hoping that in our last few moments, the little black bundle of fluff might just stick its head out, but it's not going to do that if I speak too loudly. So we're going to have to whisper, whisper our way through the last few moments of this incredible day. And as the evening light descends, our chances of this cub coming out get stronger and stronger. And it's just like the animals knew that it was Father's Day, or at least at Father's Day weekend. We've had babies galore. We've had Vula, the dominant male leopard of this area, who has sired countless generations of leopard cubs. Yes, hello girl. Hello gorgeous. How's your baby? I said to you at the start of this safari that I would hope that I could change your perception of hyenas as something mean and malignant and horrible and thieves. They are the most, please take my word for it, they are the most incredible animals. And if we can share the sighting of this little cub for you with you, it would be only the third time that we have ever seen it and it will be about to become probably one of the most famous hyena cubs in the world. And the best thing about this is that you can follow its story and Shadow's cub's story and Mvula's story and all of the incredible Sindile's story, all of the incredible characters that you have met today. You can continue to follow these stories for weeks and for months to come. And the joy, as you could tell from our afternoon today, the joy of these live safaris is that we cannot script it, we cannot plan it. The animals write their own stories and it is just up to us to tell you them. I'm going to say goodbye for now. Hopefully our little cub makes an appearance before the end, but I don't know if it's going to, but while I sit and wait patiently, let's go over to Brent with something very large. And. The incredible safari isn't over just yet. We're being blessed with a nice herd of eddies just before we end. So we're on a live African safari. Uh, we've seen leopards, we've seen hyenas, and let's go across. And we've got elephants for the last little bit. And thanks very much for joining us. And remember, we do do this every day. This is Safari Live, and have a great Father's Day weekend. Remember, tomorrow morning, We'll be doing the exact same thing, same time. But I'm sure you're tired of me talking. Let's end on that beautiful elephant. <laughs>